This guy, talk about an early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. You realize in this situation, I would be the second mouse. Well, so we both get cheese. No, you're the bird. You. Never mind. What are you doing out here? I mean, I saw the comment section. People are just begging for some more Mick. Just trying to give the people what they want. <laughs> you're giving them something. Yeah, I'm pretty much finished up here anyways. Got all the shots I needed. So none of this actually had anything to do with doing any work. Can't do her, bud. Don't work Sundays. <laughs> it's 7.30 in the morning on a Monday. This week's gonna be a good one. I can feel it. Well, somebody has to do some work to this truck this week, so let's get started. My gospel screams adjusted, my work stuck in the ground. Welcome to another episode of My Old Man's Truck, the build series. This week we're officially tackling the front end rebuild. I don't really anticipate any big challenges, but this is my first time doing it on a Dodge, and my first time doing it on a one ton. It's a really exciting episode because this should be the deepest we're diving into this truck's teardown, then we can start building. Let's get into it. this front end rebuild I'm doing everything steering related it's terribly worn out I'm doing wheel seals I need a special tool for that by the sounds of it so I'm not doing that quite yet and of course I'm doing ball joints I've borrowed this funky press I'm not entirely sure how to use it but I think I have it set up here we're gonna give it a little wrap see what happens It moved, but it didn't move very far. The thing is, it comes with all these different attachments. I don't know which one is for putting on and which one is for taking off. 
All right, got a whole stack of adapters here. My buddy that lent me this offered to give me a hand. I'm always reluctant to take up people's time. I think maybe I should have said yes. Oh, geez. <laughs> Wrong way immediately. Pressing them in was way easier than pressing them out. And the new ones even came with a little rubber. Always wise to use a rubber, especially on an old gal like this. She's seen some miles. <laughs> Looking good. They both come with a grease nipple. Only the bottom one comes with a clip. And if you're wondering how accidents happen, go ahead and keep watching me try and put this clip on here. Because I don't have those fancy little clip pliers big enough to do this one. There we go. These do come with a slightly visible amount of grease. It's not enough. Make sure you put some more in there. I don't want to put anything back on. I'm not going to put any of this back on yet because I still have to do my seals. So I may as well get started on the other side, dismantling. This mantle has gone quite good so far, but we've run into a huge issue. That's where the seal is supposed to sit on the axle. It's totally destroyed. It's a thousand bucks for new ones. So I'm gonna remove the U-joints and see about getting it welded and machined. Driver's side is better, but not much. I'm very fortunate that my good buddy Sasha with SK Customs is a world-class TIG welder, mechanical engineer, and lives just down the road. He's fitting me in on a Sunday and we're fixing the axles.
Not gonna lie to you, been dreading this particular job from the very beginning. Time to finally tackle doing the wheel seals. These two keepers that hold on the bearing, these have to go back in the exact same spot. I've been recommended to actually mark them with a punch, but I can see they're already marked differently, so I just took a photo, and then I'll be able to duplicate when I put them back on. Decent progress so far. I got both the seals out, that was no problem. The intermediate shaft bearing, that was really difficult to do. Um, putting the driver's side seal in is supposed to be quite easy. You can just tap it in right here. I'm gonna have to get creative with that side. I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to film that. And then a big thank you again to Steel Horse Performance. The intermediate shaft bearing, I could not source online or from a uh, parts store. Dodge didn't even know that it existed, but the folks down at Steel Horse, they had an upgraded version, like a composite material that they gave me, which was super nice. So big thanks to those guys. Let's see if we can get these seals in here. This is the passenger side seal, and typically it's a two-person job. You can tap it in from the driver's side over. I'm gonna try and pull it in. I have this socket that fits perfectly in there. I cut this piece of ready rod with another socket that fits on the end of the axle. I'm hoping I can just pull it into the axle like that. We'll see. Operation seal puller was a failure. Wrecked the seal. Attempt number two. I got two new seals, and I'm gonna try once more with the pulling method. If it can't work, then maybe I'll call my dad, see if he can come give me a hand. I've changed my tool slightly. This socket still goes on the wheel side, and I'm gonna be pulling, but I built this little thing it was a hole saw, a wood hole saw. It's two and one eighth. It fits perfectly inside this seal. I think the big socket I was using was catching on this ring in here. This will give me the ability to kind of see inside there as it's pulling in, make sure it's pulling straight. I've also thoroughly cleaned the hole and put a little bit of grease on there. Forgot to grease it last time, so I don't know. Feeling, I was feeling good last time. I'm feeling even better this time. Fingers crossed. Well, the axle seals are finally in, but that job came with every bit of challenge I was expecting and more. What I've learned is I think I should have done the passenger side first, so then you can feed a pipe or something all the way through the axle and tap in from the driver's side, which I think is what was recommended. I just kind of spaced out on that. I did end up wrecking three seals, and on the fourth one, my dad came and gave me a hand, and we did use the pulling method and kind of wrangled it in that way. Either way, the job is done, thankfully. I can't start putting the truck together quite yet because I'm still waiting on hubs to come in. I had to order them online because they were just way too expensive to source locally, so hopefully those will be in today, but the truck is gonna be sitting like this for this week's episode. So let's get into our parts breakdown. Ball joints, really happy to have that one done. And I think that was the first time they've been done on this truck since the factory, $334.16. The axle welding and machining, I did swing a deal with my good buddy Sash, but that shop time would have been $180. Axle seals, 
a little bit more expensive than I wanted because I wrecked them all, <laughs> $92.62. The intermediate shaft bearing, again, given to me by Steel Horse Performance, big thanks to those guys, would have been $38.28. And these teardowns, they don't do much for shop sundries, so I just chalked up another 20 bucks for a grand total of $665.06. Pretty low cost on these teardown videos, but hopefully next week we'll be fully ramped up on the building and the putting back together. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed another episode of My Old Man's Truck, the build series. Most of all, thanks for watching everybody. Yeah, chasing dreams like they was dollars. No, she got me deceiving without the commas. Money earned, but this time is borrowed. Caught between me planning for the future and living like they ain't no tomorrow. Yeah, love her even when she called drama. Huh. She more wifey than a baby mama. She a day one been around since I was hitting bottles. See me at the top and at the bottom. You know, honey, we done been around. Can't believe all them things that we doing now. Doing now, you know, honey, we done been around. All that drama that I caused, like, you still around. You still around. She a day penny lane. She my drug, you my Nova King. Hold me down when I go away. Go with them words, she know what to say.